Hey, everybody. What is happening? I hope you're having an awesome week. Hope you ended up with an awesome week this week. Hope you got everything done that you wanted to get done. Now, look, um, thanks for tuning in. If you're new, geez, man, we have... We recently did a deal with Inman, and we have a boatload of new listeners. So if you're new, thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you found us. Now, here's what we do. We interview the top minds in real estate and break it down. What are they doing? What, what, are, what did they used to do and that doesn't work anymore? What's working right now in December 2015? Now, today's guest... Um, this kid, I, shouldn't, I don't know. He's a kid, I guess. Yeah. Look, he's 28 years old. He is phenomenally successful. I was really impressed with this guy. Um, it, w- here's what we talk about today. Um, he started in real estate six years ago. We talk about how in the beginning he was just doing the new agent thing, right? All the stuff that people think they should be doing. Then he got some one-on-one coaching from Gary Keller changed the game. Uh, this guy is, uh, he's got like five expansion teams. Um, last year he did 270 deals. Uh, this year he'll do 400. Um, and again, he's only 28 years old and, and it all started getting him on this right track. It all started with him figuring out how to do the math. Now this math <clears throat> Oh, this is a little bit off topic, and in the in the episode, we don't necessarily break down the math because because you know I assume that all you guys know how to do it, and uh, and if you don't, let me let me run you through some some very easy easy math, um, and it's this: if you know, well, well, let me start it this way. Tom Ferry came on the show, and he said, for all the the majority of his coaching clients, they need to make sixty seven calls. Uh, to get one listing, okay? Now, the industry standard is about, that's about 70. So so what that means is, if you know that, if you know that on average, you have to make 70 calls to get one listing, it's pretty easy to do the math, right? So you go, okay, how much do I want to make this year? I want to make 100 grand, all right? What is the average sale in your market? Now, let's say that the average sale in your market is 250 grand, uh, times point uh, zero two nine. Just again, rough math. I'm not taking out, you know, the eighty, twenty, seventy, thirty. 30. So that's seventy two fifty per deal. So you want to make a hundred grand. So you go a hundred thousand divided by seventy two fifty. You only need thirteen point seven deals. All right, thirteen point seven deals. Call it. Let's call it fourteen deals. You need to make fourteen deals. Fourteen deals. Uh, you know that you need to make seventy calls uh, per deal. So fourteen times seventy. You need to make 980 calls during the year to do 14 deals. Divide that by 12. Well, you know you need to make 81 calls a month. <laughs> Divide that by uh, 20 working days. That's four calls a day. Okay? So, so that's the math. Now, it could be different for you. Maybe you're not super good at converting, so maybe you need to make 100 calls. You know, maybe – and again, that math – is not actually accurate um, because, um, you know, really it should be, you know, 70 calls to get a listing appointment, um, you know, and then you're only going to close three, you know, at 30% of those deals. So that's fine. So it's, it's instead of four calls a day, you triple it. So now it's 12 calls a day, right? You triple that 900 number, 983, whatever it was, 983 times three. Well, that's 3,000 calls during the year. Anyhow, you, you get the point. And, I, and this is phenomenally important, guys. If you can break this down, if you know how to do the math, um, it, it, you just go, this is what I got to do every day. Uh, and, and it takes all the guesswork out of it. All right. So that's that, that was the beginning of today's guest going from 13 deals to 400 deals. Um, we also talk about why you should level up and meet people, people that you want to model. Now, that was another key to today's guest success. He found people that were doing what he wanted to be doing. And guess what? Started hanging around him. Right. We often talk about that Jim Rohn quote. You're the average of the five people or four people you spend the most time with. Uh, and look, I'm glad I'm one of them. Uh, OK, we all we talk about. And this is really important. Why you guys need to be taking risk. Now, I, I will tell you that I've surveyed you guys and um, and I've, I've found out something very unique uh, to real estate agents, and and it's this, and it's this is a very flawed way of thinking. The, the what I found out from from talking with 
hundreds, thousands of, of, of listeners and, and, and surveying you guys is this. You guys work on commission. Now, your commissions, when you get them, are big, right? They're seven grand, 10 grand, sometimes 20 or 30 grand. Um, but because you work on commission, there is this notion in the industry – um, and if you don't have it, that's fine. But but and this may be uh, this may be indicative of very low performing people. But there's a notion that because you work on commission, everybody who works for you should also work on commission. I've had people say, I want somebody to prospect for me, but I only want to pay them when they make an appointment. I, I want somebody to prospect for me, but I only want to pay them when I get a deal. Like the world doesn't work that way. And and again, today's guest, he talks about that. He talks about being able to take risks. And he goes so far as to say, if you can't get comfortable with taking risks, if you can't get comfortable with betting on yourself, you're going to be sitting on the sidelines. Uh, and then we get into coaching. I'm always very, very, uh, very curious as to why people that are uber successful, right? 400, 700, you know, a thousand deals and they still have a coach. Um, so we talk about coaching and what he did. And speaking of coaching, uh, this was, I, this is a great setup. It was very unintentional. We are going to be launching literally within seven days here. We're going to be launching a new product, um, because I know that coaching is so important. However, most coaches charge a thousand dollars a month, and for a lot of people, that's just that's just out of reach. So here's what we're doing: new product. It's called the School of Profits. Now, what this is, it's basically you, it's gonna it's gonna start at ninety nine bucks a month, okay? Uh, and we're gonna quickly ramp up the prices, but it's gonna it's gonna launch at ninety nine bucks a month. You are going to be able to one. Get on every Thursday. We're going to have a call. You're going to be able, with these top performers, just like today's guest, you're going to, be able to get on these calls and interact. We're going to cover one topic, uh, listing presentation, prospecting, whatever it might be, um, you know, new t tools and apps, whatever. We're going to cover a topic and you are going to be live on the call with me and my guest. You're going to be able to ask me questions. You're going to be able to ask my guests questions and learn in real time. Learn and, and get your questions answered that are specific to you and your business. Um, it's called the School of Profits. Um, here's, here's two other things. Number one, you're going to be able to join the calls. Very, you know, get coaching for, you know, a hundred bucks. Uh, again, right now, that's when it's going to launch at. Number two, we are going to match you up with an accountability partner. Now, this is going way beyond what most coaches or any coaches that I know of will do. We're going to match you with someone else who is hopefully you guys are kind of at the kind of similar levels. Um, you know, we might have you guys take a disc profile to make sure that you guys can get along. Uh, so you're going to get a, an accountability partner and then you're going to be a part of a very small and private group. Um, now, this is either going to be a Facebook group or a Google group. I'm not sure. Uh, but we want a, a, a tribe where you can – a community that you guys can go to uh, and ask your questions and, and help other people and have other people help you. Anyhow, all right. Um, let's get to it. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Just before we get to the content, really quickly, hashtag for the show is unpack that idea out on Twitter. Would love to meet you there. My handle on Twitter is at Super Agents Live. Would love to, to you know, have you join the conversation on Twitter. Um, you're not going to want to miss future episodes like this. So please go to the site, superagentslive.com, um, and, uh, and sign up. Uh, we have a right now. We have a free membership. There's some good, good uh, goal planning, tracking sheets, uh, scripts on there. There's lots of stuff on there. It's it's all free. Um, and uh, and for look, we're rapidly getting 2016. If you think you're ready to level up, radio, man, you guys know it. You hear it all the time. Radio is that secret weapon. Go to our sponsor, realestateradioexperts.com. Fill out the getting started sheet. And uh, see if you are a good fit. All right, let's get to today's guest, Tim Heil. 
On the show today, I am really excited to have today's guest. Now, I, I recently met today's guest, but I saw him. I was at the Keller Williams family reunion, and uh, I didn't go to any panels except for this guy's. And I was really, really impressed with uh, how the, the message and how he delivered it. Now, here's the deal. He, uh, he has a few different expansion teams in, uh, in Texas, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, um, last year they did 270 deals. This year they'll do 400. We're going to talk about he's got a very, very interesting um, uh, separate group that he spun off, and that's how he's grown that. Uh, overall, he, he makes about 300K GCI. Um, last year, 2 million. This year he's going to break three. I'm thrilled to welcome Tim Heil. Hey, Tim, thanks for taking the time out, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me on the show. So listen, before we get into your business, what's working, what's not, and uh, I, I'm always – Curious. I'm always interested in the man behind the machine. So take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Tim. Okay. So um, I just turned 28. I'm, uh, I'm born and raised here in Austin, Texas. I went to college, and, and when I graduated, I moved, moved right back and started selling real estate. I joined KW um, right away and, and um, started, I guess I went on my first listing appointment when I was 22 years old. So been in the business now going on six years. And, you know, I'm, I uh, was a business major. I graduated in 2009 as a, as a finance major, actually. So uh, I was kind of in the middle of a financial meltdown. And uh, so getting into real estate was almost, almost a bit of a backup plan. My dad was an entrepreneur. He, he uh, built a video store chain here in Austin and then eventually got into home building. So I kind of got my real estate license thinking that I would get into home building or maybe even work with him selling his homes wasn't really sure what that was going to look like, but I, I stumbled upon the Million Dollar Real Estate Agent book that Gary Keller had written, and instantly my eyes were open to you know all the possibilities that there are for real estate agents in this business, in this industry, and I had no idea. It totally shifted my perspective on the industry. So joined KW and um, went to a KW uh, sales seminar that they have called Bold, and instantly learned, well, I say instantly, kind of fluttered around for about six months, not really knowing not really knowing what to do, kind of just doing the typical new agent, new agent thing. And then um, about six months, nine months into it, I went, after going through Bold, I figured out, you know, okay, well, if you make a certain amount of calls, it'll give you a certain amount of results. And from those results, you know, a certain amount of appointments and clients taken and so on and so forth. So I kind of figured out the math formula and just um, dedicated about four hours a day, every day for about four years to cold calling. And that's kind of how I built my business. That's amazing, man. It's amazing that you're so young. Um, so help me understand really quick, Tim. Um, you, you, why did you go to college? I mean, is, was it during college that you realized that you wanted to get into real estate or that you realized that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? And really, here's my real question. Why did you even go to school? So, you know, I, it, I was kind of, it was a bit of a late bloomer. You know, I didn't actually have – I always knew that I wanted to make money, and I always knew that I wanted to – in some way, shape, or form, own and grow a business, I never really had the tools to do it. I never really had the tools or the understanding of how I would get there. So going to college was the, I mean, it was the next logical step for me. Everybody in my family, it's, you know, kind of what we did, kind of what, kind of what was expected from people in my high school, and it was kind of the natural thing. So I was kind of just following the path of, that was kind of set for me or set, set before me up until uh, my senior year when the next logical step was to get a real job and after reading that book, I just decided, um, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to go make this thing happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of naturally, naturally fell. I will say I was extremely lucky. They say, you know, the people that you hang around with and the, the people that surround you are, are going to have probably more to do with who you become and what your future is than, than anything else. And so getting involved with the Keller Williams, um, scene here in Austin and, you know, just being around the people at my market center and, and reading that book and, starting to follow Gary Keller and his teachings and everything. And that totally, totally took me, took me from the level I was at and soared me past, way past, way beyond where I, where I thought I would have been. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, that, you know, that's a Jim Rohn quote, right? Jim Rohn will say, you're the average of the four people you spend the most time with. So, so were you deliberate about that? I, I, I get this all the time. People send me emails and they're like, hey, Toby, will you mentor me? Now, I don't, I don't have the time. To, I mean, literally, I'd have 200 mentor mentees if I did that. Um, were you deliberate about it? did that notion of being uh, surrounding yourself with stars? Were you deliberate about that, or, or did you just kind of stumble into that on accident? Extremely deliberate about it. So I, at first, I stumbled into it. I got to tell you, at first, I stumbled into it just becoming um, a KW agent sitting in this market center. But what happened was, um, I went to a Keller Williams convention called Mega Camp, 
And I sat there and listened to Gary Keller talk and talk and talk and interview the best of the best at everything, the best of the best at open houses, the best of the best at um, internet lead generation, Craigslist, um, you know, cold calling, the whole deal. And what I realized was, you know, I need, to, I need to find these guys and I need to start figuring out what they're doing and just doing exactly what they're doing. So there were a couple of avenues that I could do that. One was, a, was Gary has a little, you know, it's not a radio show like yours, but it's a similar concept. It's, you know, he, he puts out four podcasts half a month where he's just interviewing somebody who's the best of the best um, in our industry at a certain lead gen technique. So I would listen to that um, consistently every single week. And what I did was I took the top agent at my market center, took the top agent at my market center, and I literally, um, I literally begged him to spend time with me. And so what happened was um, he noticed that I was actually putting in the work. I was actually doing the things that he would teach me, and um, I was actually coming in and lead generating. Uh, most agents I think that he had spent time with were spending, were basically wasting a lot of his time, and then not going and not going and implementing anything. So I think he had told me one time that he actually had, he actually got energy out of talking to me. So he enjoyed it. So he would come and meet with me once every week, once every couple of weeks, and I would literally just pick his brain on everything there possibly was about this industry. And so I would, I would um, essentially just model everything after him, and uh, he was a huge mentor to me. And then I started um, after I went to a couple more conventions. I started um, figuring out how to get in touch with some of these other agents across the country that were doing other things that I wasn't seeing locally at a high level. And so I would call them. Um, I'd be on every webinar. I'd be on every – and I sat in the classroom more after college than I did in college, just <laughs> listening um, and taking notes and then going back and actually implementing. So is that – that's awesome. I mean, and I think that everybody, you know, as they hear your story, I mean, I would love for everybody to to model you, right? Because that's fundamentally what you did. You went out, and found superstars, and you modeled them. But, but I think, I think Tim, you know, one of the things that I'm hearing from you that uh, is very indicative of a top producer is that you you're not scared. You know, look, Dave Jenks came on the show. And he says you have to be learning based. Now, for you, you're not scared to throw money at personal development, right? You, you spent money on bold. You spent money going to these mega camps. Why do you think, Tim, uh, that most people, they can hear your story, they see what you do, but they just can't, they just can't get their mind around opening up their wallet and, uh, yeah. and investing in themselves? You know, man, I think it's two things. So the first thing is you've got to be willing to take a little bit of risk. If you're not willing to, to, to step out and take a risk, you're going you're gonna to be sitting on the sidelines. So for me, that is one thing I've, I've, always, I've always enjoyed taking a little bit of a risk. So um, fortunately in business and, and in real estate, you're betting on yourself at first, right? And when you're doing, when you're spending money on personal development, you're betting on yourself. So it's not that risky. Um, I remember what's funny is to, to go to bold, I actually had to borrow the money. It cost 800 bucks and I didn't have any money. So, um, I borrowed it from my sister. Um, and, and to, to hire a coach right, right after bold, I ended up hiring a coach. It was a 12 month contract. Um, it was a thousand dollars a month. I've had a coach now for five and a half years. Um, but, but at the time, when I took that jump, I think I had about two or three thousand dollars in my bank account, and I had uh, I had a I think I had one or two pending listings, maybe a couple active listings. So you know I knew that there was some stuff coming down the pipe, but definitely signed a twelve month contract, thinking that there was about a fifty percent chance I was going to be defaulting on that or having to hold off having to hold off for a little bit. So fortunately, you know the properties closed and the money hit the bank account, and I, and I was and I was off and running the the coaching literally took me from the level I was at to the next level and, and money wasn't an issue after about six months in. But I think one, it's, it's the risk taking. And then the other one is I think a lot of people think that they have to have the entire amount of money in their bank account um, to, to, you know, if they're going to hire somebody, for example, they need to have $40,000 in their bank account, or if they're going to hire a coach, they got to have that 12,000. And I think what they don't, what they, what you got to realize is you really only need 90 days maybe four months, um, if, you're willing, if you're willing to put in the work, that leverage or that, or that training is going to actually provide you. And so, you know, if you're betting on yourself like you are in personal development, it's not as big of a risk. I love it. And I think one other thing that you know, as the audience hears this, and hopefully it's resonating with them, is that you did this in the worst environment, right? 2009, you know, whether it's late to 2009, all the whole year was in 2010, it was terrible. And so you took this risk in the worst and the world was melting and you stepped up uh, to the plate. I think that's awesome. So, um, so I know what you said, right? When you first got your license, you, you, you picked these guys brain and then you realized that you needed to be prospecting. And, and for you, you sat down four hours a day, 
to prospect. T- tell us a little bit about about that and your uh, your thesis around uh, cold calling. Yeah, man. So at first, you know, it, it was at first it was more like eight or nine hours a day because I didn't have any clients. So other than making phone calls and um, and and putting them into my CRM and and writing a thank you note for the time that they took to talk to me, there wasn't really anything else for me to do. So until I had clients, um, I, I was spending most of the day. Now the problem was at the time it took me eight or nine hours just to get 20 contacts, just to, just to have about 20 or 25 conversations because I was so inefficient. So as time went by, I became more efficient, and it only took me half the day, and, I, and that was necessary to get that efficient because um, eventually I had clients, and I had to actually go sell real estate in the afternoons. So what happened was I, I started out with the, the mentality of 20 contacts a day. Then I shifted that mentality to I need to lead generate for four hours a day. But what happened was some days I was getting results and some days I wasn't. And so I got really, um, I got really frustrated and I, and I just decided I needed to have another way of measuring if I was actually moving the ball forward um, that day or not. Because I set a goal for myself. I said, uh, I'm going to track, I tracked everything, man. I tracked how many calls, how many contacts, how many leads, everything. So I, I said, I'm going to set a goal for myself and I'm only going to track a day worked if I, um, if I actually accomplish my lead generation for the day. If I don't, I'm not going to track it as a day work. So I had a goal to work 250 days that first 12 months in the business. And um, it was actually for 2010, my first January through December, is when I finally had this thing kind of figured out. So um, what I did was I decided that day lead, a day work was going to be a day that I generated five new, new seller qualified opportunities and put them into my pipeline. So I called those a nurture. So a nurture for me had to meet specific criteria. It had to be somebody, had to be a seller that, a seller that I'd already spoken with um, that had told me that they were interested in listing their home within a year, that they were open to meeting with me in person. They weren't already committed to somebody else. You know, I had their correct contact information, everything. So by the time this person made it into my, my, my pipeline, this was very different than five leads or just five nets or, or anything like that. These were qualified seller leads that I'd already spoken to and vetted out. So I could do it from calling expired Fizbos, neighborhoods, whatever it was. So five a day, I sat there and did the math, and I knew that five a day would get me um, 25 a week. 25 a week would get me 100 a month. 100 a month would get me over 1,000 a year. In fact, three, three and a half, four years in, I had dang near 5,000 sellers that I'd added to my pipeline that I'd already spoken to, that had told me that they were open to meeting with me, that they wanted to list within 12 months. You know, dang near 5,000 of them. So um, you know, by that time, it was, I, I kind of joked that it's, it's very difficult not to sell a couple hundred homes when you've got 5,000 people in there that have told you they want to list their home and they're open to talking to you about it. Um, so that, that was kind of my mentality. And so rather than waking up every day and considering myself as a telemarketer, I woke up every day and, and just thought about the business I was going to be running, um, the business that I was going to be owning and managing and, and building um, you know, a few years down the line when I had so much business that I wasn't going to actually have to be doing the actual technical work myself. And so I always was focusing on the future. And um, there were a lot of people around me, like my, you know, my family and my friends that would kind of, kind of not joke, but kind of say, how can you, how can you just be a telemarketer all day? Like, do you enjoy that? Do you really like cold calls? And I just kind of laughed because I never even considered myself as that. I just considered that as a means to an end, something that I would have to do just for a little while so that I would never have to do it again. And it, it worked out. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so so um, you mentioned some of the, the groups that you called into, right? Expires and Fizbos. What what other groups uh, did you call? I mean, were you using a land voice data and, and and choosing a geographic farm and like and, and calling into that? Or again, so, McK- yeah. So, so, here, so here's so here's the deal. What I would do is I would always start. Um, I always had my priorities, so I would always start with the hottest leads that I could call that day. So that was obviously. You know, the brand new expired, the brand new Fizbos. Um, I'd start with that. Then I would move to, um, then I would move to kind of the older expired and the older Fizbos. You know, people that I'd already called, but I just hadn't, they hadn't answered the phone. So those leads stacked up over time. So I'd work through those. And then once I ran out of those, um, and I still hadn't gotten my five, then I had to work neighborhoods because that was pretty much all that was left. Um, I didn't have another lead source. So I was getting all this information manually because I didn't have any money at first. So I was, literally manually pulling the expires and finding their information, uh, FISBOs, going to Craigslist and FISBO.com, stuff like that. And then for the neighborhood data, we, in Texas, we have something called a real list. A lot, a lot of cities have, or a lot of states have real list, and it's basically just the county tax data. And so it would give it, you could pull a report for 
you know, you could say I want a hundred phone numbers or I want 500 phone numbers, um, you know, that, that, that the system has within a, within a five mile radius of this street or this neighborhood. And so it would literally just be a bunch of, a bunch of neighborhood houses that I would call cold. And I would just say, you know, hi, my name is Tim Heil. I'm a real estate agent here in Austin. I'm actually a local, local specialist here in the neighborhood. I was just calling to find out if you um, had considered selling your house. <laughs> it was that simple. I mean, um, I, I think I, I think I had a Mike Ferry script that I followed for a little bit that went something like, um, you know, um, how, how did you happen to choose the neighborhood? How long did you live there? Um, if you were to make a move, where would you go next? You know, so there, there were there were a couple of a couple of additional things I have on the script, but all in all, it was very very basic. I mean, I was just I was literally cranking through numbers just to find people that said, yeah, you know, I am I am thinking about moving. Probably not for six months, seven months. The key to my success um, was really consistency. See, mm. no, nothing blows up over nothing blows up overnight. So, um, in my first year, I, I sold eighteen houses. But only nine of those came from my prospecting, and I was and I was hammering the phones every freaking day. And only nine of those came from my prospecting. The second year, I sold sixty-five houses. Fifty-five of those were listings um, that came from my prospecting. So all of a sudden, it started to really pan out. The second year, the third year, I sold one hundred and thirty-five houses. A hundred of those were listings. Almost all of them came from my prospecting. Wow. So what happened was I, the pipeline matured over time. So it taught me a huge lesson that you know I was putting in the work, and so I thought. I thought, I, it was funny, the first year, I thought that you, I, as hard as I worked, that was all to just sell nine houses. And I thought, this is going to be really tough. I'm going to have to work pretty dang hard if I want to sell more than, more than 20 houses a year. So, you know, I, I kept working as hard as I could, but what I didn't realize at the time that I know now was that I had been just, I had just been filling my pipeline with leads six months, nine months, 12 months. You know, I'd throw all these people in that said, follow back up with me in the future. And, um, I guess one of the differences um, with me was that I actually followed up with them. So if they told me, call me in nine months, I put a ticker in. And because I was so committed to the, to the eight to 12 lead generation time, what happened was it became eight to 11 was when I would generate leads. And at 11 o'clock, I always switched to my follow-up. All the people that I told, uh, all the people that I had in my CRM with a follow-up call, they always got a call at 11 o'clock. So nine months later, 12 months later, three years later, four years later, Every single person that, that I told I would call back got a call back, actually got multiple calls back. So I never missed my follow-up because I, I never missed my lead generation. I was so committed to that time block. Um, and, and so I, I went back about four years into it. I went back and looked at my numbers because I had been tracking everything into like an Excel spreadsheet at the time. And what I found out was that, that um, of the appointments that I actually set, over 70% of them came from a follow-up call, not from the initial call. So all my business was basically coming from the fact that I would just throw people into my pipe and that said they wanted to list and uh, and follow up with them whenever they told me to. Okay, that's that's uh, th- so so. I, there's a bunch of questions I have to ask you. Um, first, I, I'm just curious about this: is when you first started, Tim? You know, you in order for them to get placed in the nurture bucket, they needed to ha- want to sell their house in 12 months. Was there ever a time where I, I'm sh- well? At what point did you go? Okay. That's too long, nine months, six months, three months, 30 days. Did, was there ever that kind of progression for you? What do you, what do you mean? Say that again. So, so I, I had a guy, Thatch in on the show. And, uh, and this guy, you know, he, he's a crazy door knocker. And what he said was, you know, as he, you know, maybe two years into the business, he, he didn't want to, if somebody said, if their timeline to sell was any longer than 30 days, he didn't even put him in there in his CRM. All he wanted was oh, gotcha. you have to be you have to sell in thirty days or less, and then you're you're a target of mine. So I'm curious to you, was it always twelve months, or did you slowly shorten that that time cycle? So it, yeah, so it actually used to be I used to do if it, if it was um, if it was longer than twelve months, I would still sometimes put them in, but it was very it was just if, if I could hear it in their voice that they were that they were serious, I put them in. If I couldn't, I wouldn't put them in. And so it was there was nothing really that I could say it was black and white. I was trying to keep it under 12 months. But what happened was once I started, once I hired a calling assistant, I had to get very black and white about it because now I had to go from entrepreneurial, just making things happen to being very, very purposeful about um, what I expected because all I was leveraging the activity out. And so what we decided to do was if it was, if it was within 12 months, they got, they were considered a nurture. We put them in the CRM with a follow up date. If it was post 12 months, um, they went into an Excel spreadsheet. We called it a soft nurture. In fact, we still do this. We call them a soft nurture 
and um, they go into an Excel spreadsheet. So the reason we do that is we don't want our pipeline, we don't want our CRM cluttered up with a bunch of crap. And so, honestly, at the end of the day, if they're, if they're, po- if they're longer than 12 months out, um, there's a very low likelihood that they're actually going to be doing business with you. Um, it's, a, lot happens in over, a lot happens in over a year. So um, I, I would say it changed a little bit, but honestly, it's been, it's been pretty consistent most of the time. Okay. So, so, you know, as you tell the story, right, you, I mean, you're, you're, I hear this really strict discipline, right? You are able to map out a plan and then stick to it. Um, it were, you, were you always like that, Tim, or is that something that you've developed over the years? You know, um, I think what happened was it, it was that what I was explaining earlier about the five, five nurtures a day, um, you know, I, I, that I could wake up a, a few years in and have 5,000. 5,000 qualified sellers in my pipeline, I became like obsessed with that. I realized that, that that was the key. It was almost like, it was almost like compounding interest or something because, um, you know, because all these leads that get put in, you wake up one day and they, they start, they all of a sudden they've matured and you have more business than you can handle. I, I became obsessed with that five a day for whatever it was, for whatever reason it was. Um, I was very, very, um, focused on building a seventh level, real estate team, millionaire real estate team from that, from the MREA book. And, um, I was so focused on it. I had figured out that the one thing that mattered, the one thing that mattered was getting my five a day. And for some reason I was able to just, I was able to just become totally obsessed with it. I mean, it got to the point where if I had to break my time block to go on an appointment or, or if I didn't get my five within my time block, I, I literally remember pulling over into uh, to a, to a movie theater parking lot one time after a listing appointment at like six o'clock at night, ju- and I had a I had a call list that I printed out that I took with me because I hadn't gotten my five yet. So I remember just sitting there calling until finally it was like nine o'clock and I physically just couldn't call anymore. And and you know whether I if I if I at that point if I only had four you know I wasn't counting it as a as a full day work because I knew I didn't move the ball forward. I mean I I became so self-accountable for this one specific goal, not to everything else. I mean, I actually, um, you know, I recently lost, or I recently, about a year ago, I lost about 65 pounds, um, but I, I, I had gained a bunch of weight. I mean, I had become very undisciplined in a lot of other places in my life, but it was this one thing that I, that I just stayed totally focused on, and, um, and, it, and it was the game changer. It was being consistent in that one goal that mattered. Right. I mean, I, and I think, you know, you, you, that's, the, that's the second or third time you talk about consistency. And I think the, the, the real takeaway for everybody is that, you know, hard work like that, Tim, that it trumps talent every day. Right. It's just hard work yeah. will trump talent, everything else. Now, um, on the same thing, we're going to move on in a second, but I, I'm curious. Um, you have 5000 people. How, with, talk to us about follow-up. I'll leave it really broad because I, I know you have some kind of interesting uh, takes on a bunch of stuff. So uh, what's your viewpoint on follow-up, how you do it, right, different methods? Yeah, so there's, so there's a couple of things. So one, you know, if it's a seller, what we found is that sellers don't really want to talk to you until they're ready to actually talk to you, mm. right? They're, until they're ready to meet with you in person for a listing appointment, there's not a whole heck of a lot they want to say to you over the phone. So it's pretty much... You know, it's pretty much we're just calling them back whenever they told us to call them back. We're usually cutting it in half. So if they say, call me in six months, we're checking in in three because we don't want to miss out on the opportunity. Um, and, and we're just making sure that everything's still going. We do viral marketing. I don't know if you've heard about – if you know what viral marketing is. Yeah, but I know, I know viral, Frank. But yeah, Frank, viral with a Y. So uh, I've, I've, been, I've been working with Frank for probably four years now. Um, it was funny. I, I kind of um, joked um, the, the first time I, I talked to him, I said – there's no way I'm paying 500 bucks a month to do what y'all do. And he said, okay, well, um, why don't you just, why don't you just do it until you get, cause I said, I'm going to get my own 33 touch together. And he said, well, what are you doing now? I said, well, I'm not doing anything yet. He said, well, why don't you just hire us until you have your own 33 touch together? So I'm like, okay, fine. So I hired him on, hired him on a month to month. And here I am four years later, still working with viral. I'm so passionate about that system and how well it works because what happens is every single nurture I get, I get their email. If we're cold calling neighborhoods, expires, it doesn't matter. Every single email we get, we're putting into the system, and every month we're sending them educational videos. So I, I, we, we uh, do our follow-up call, and they literally, it's, it's almost like they know exactly who I am. Um, some people will even say, yeah, I've been watching your videos, and uh, we pretty much are ready to hire you. You know, we, you, we can tell how professional you are. We can tell that you 
you know what you're talking about. I mean, it's like, it's like they feel like they know you, even though you've never seen them in your life because they've been watching your videos yeah. to a month for the last six months or whatever it is. So we do that. And then, um, on the seller side, it's very basic. That's pretty much it. You, um, Oh, and every time we would get a nurture, um, we would write a handwritten note, you know, dear so-and-so, I really appreciate the time you took to speak with me today. Look forward to talking with you in the future about your home. Tim, get a business card magnet. Um, we'd show up at listing appointments year after year. Um, you know, our, our listing appointments have our, have our magnet on their refrigerator. So it's super helpful. Um, and, and so th- basically we talk to them. They tell us when to follow up, send them the personal note with the card. Um, we, we put up, put them into our CRM with a follow up call and send the viral marketing emails to them until, um, it's time to follow back up. Of course, that pops up on the CRM and we just call them. If they don't answer, we call them every single day. We have a bunch of different numbers that we call from. So we, we go to, um, Ring Central and Google Voice. You can get a bunch of different phone numbers, local and in other, in other, uh, area codes. And we're just calling them, man. Um, our goal is just get these people back on the phone. So we're pretty relentless with the follow up. Um, but on the buyer side, it's a whole different deal. On the buy side, you're talking internet leads, sign calls, people that are ready to do business now. And buyers, even if they're not ready to do business for six months, everybody jokes buyers are liars because they say, you know, they might even say I'm not buying and then they, you know, it turns out they bought, you know, a week later. Um, but sometimes buyers don't even know that they're buying. They just want to talk about neighborhoods because they're all excited about it. Next thing they know, they're, they're writing off on a house. So we definitely are way more in tune on the follow-up side with the buy, with the buyer leads than we are with the seller leads just because we don't want to miss out on, miss out on an opportunity there. Got it. Okay. And, and, and I just want to back up for a second. So everybody, if, if, if and I, I'm not pitching viral at all, but what Tim spent t- time talking about viral. Do, do you want to give a, a, a 15 second overview? Just kind of explain that if people are not aware yeah. of what it is. Yeah. 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 I was, sorry, I was kind of not clear on that. So basically the concept of viral marketing, you hire them and what they ask you to do is essentially, first of all, they, they, they consult you on getting, building your database of emails. So you go into your LinkedIn, your Gmail, um, your, your, uh, your Facebook profile, your contact list in your phone. They go to every place where you would have contact and they help you export those lists. Um, so I dumped about, I think I dumped like 15,000 emails. My, my entire database consisted of like 180 people. That's how many people I thought I knew. And then I, dumped, I went to all these places. I dumped in like 15,000 emails. And um, I was really nervous about it. Um, but what, what they had shown me is you send your first introductory email introducing um, what, what's going to be coming in these future video emails. And then anybody who spams you or trashes you or whatever um, immediately gets deleted from the list. So after I sent the email out, the initial email, then I, I was still left with like 10,000 emails. And those people were engaging in my content. And so um, what, what happens is you, you block 30 minutes a week. Um, I'm sorry, 30 minutes a month. And you shoot two educational videos. Uh, we do a seller directed video and a buyer directed video. And so the whole point is you're not selling anything. You're not pitching anything. You're just, it's top of mind awareness for your database, your past clients, your sphere, all the leads you have in your, in your CRM, everybody who you give an email for, you just want to be top of mind when they think about real estate. So the way that we do that is we send basically a current event educational email about the real estate industry, um, hopefully local in what's going on in your market. And I'm sending that out to, all these people um, twice a month, and then we, I get a click report every month. Um, what viral marketing does is they edit the video, they create the professional email, they uh, put the video in there, they they have a blog, they write, they they have writers on staff who go and watch your video, they go research the topic, and they write a whole blog for you. So it also helps with SEO and everything, and um, they give you a click report to show exactly who engaged in your content, so you can follow back up with them. Um, it's just a whole way to it's 24 touches of your 33 touches that literally take you 30 minutes a month. So for me, the reason I kept doing it was because um, I didn't want to send out canned drips, canned drip emails. So this is a way to have, you know, solid video content with only spending 30 minutes a month to actually get it all created. Yeah, and, and it's, it's in a high level, it's database marketing uh, utilizing video. It's, I mean, it's not rocket science at all. Um, okay, yep. so that, so, we, so, so, um, one, uh, on the follow up, so, you know, you're going to use email. And email marketing is fabulous. Um, and I think, I think it's very, very overlooked for, for the most part. But what about, what about, uh, what about text marketing, SMS marketing? Do, do you utilize that at all? Yeah, so basically what happens is when we, we do it all on, on the buyer side. So, um, what we're doing is we, we have our, our follow up split up, um, you know, Ben Kinney, I remember being at, at a convention and I saw Ben Kinney get up and talk about his 10 days of pain. And I was blown away because he talked about how a lead comes in 
and how they just hammer the lead. They're calling them 10 times a day. They're emailing them. They're texting them. They're, you know, they're, they're knocking on their door. They're peeking through the windows. They're literally doing everything that they can to get in touch with that lead. And I was blown away, and I got super excited about it. So I went and I created a template, and I created a system, and I gave it to my agents, and I, and I said, okay, here's how we're going to follow up from leads from now, with leads from now on. And six months later, I go and look at my pipeline, and it's an absolute disaster. It was a cluttered, complete mess. And so I'm sitting here realizing that the reason we're not converting is because my agents, if they don't have any business, they'll follow part of the plan, right? They're not that organized, so they're not really, you know, sending all the emails and the text messages and all that. So what, what we did was um, we, we utilized virtual assistants, and I divided the 10 days of pain, and we, we added the first 24 hours as well. So essentially now what happens is our virtual assistants handle all of the text messaging, all of the emails, and all of the database organization, making sure everybody's in the appropriate place, getting the appropriate correspondence. And my agents handle the calls to do with all the follow-up plans, but it's all facilitated by the virtual assistants. So what the virtual assistants do is every day, um, at the beginning of the day, they'll go into the CRM, and everyone who's supposed to get a call will go onto a call list in our auto dialer. And so... Mm. Um, the auto, the auto dialer can be called by any of the agents. So we have, we have a really cool system set up so that the agents come in and all they have to do is jump on the auto dialer, hit play, they call who's supposed to be called that day, and then they move on with their day. And the, the virtual assistants handle everything else from organizing, making sure people are in the right spots, uh, making sure there's always to-do set, um, there's no past due to-dos, that, that, um, that all the emails that were supposed to go out got like, like sent out, all the text messages. Of course... Um, you know, when, it, when a lead comes in, we're responding in the first five minutes. We're responding in the, uh, we have an inbound lead coordinator who's responsible for that. And then in the first 24 hours, we're calling them, we're calling them at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., um, 5 p.m., and 7 p.m. What we're doing is um, every lead that came in within the last 24 hours that hasn't been gotten a hold of yet is getting a call at, one of the, at that time. They're getting a call from a different, from a different phone number each time. Um, and, then, and then, of course, um, throughout the day, the virtual assistants are also sending a, a multitude of text messages and emails. Um, we really, really work hard to get to get contact that first 24 hours. But if we don't get contact, then in the in the next 30 days, um, there's there's this whole plan that the virtual assistants facilitate. But again, all the agents have to do is just come in and hit the call list because it's all been organized and set up for them uh, by the VAs. Yeah, I think that's really, really awesome. I mean, I think too many people, you know, uh, get uh, and look. He, basically, what you're saying. Have you read uh, Michael Gerber's E Myth? Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, so that's basically what you're doing, right? And the whole E Myth thing is outsource your weaknesses and play to your strengths. So, so you're putting your agents in a position to win, right? They're not good at organizing the database, but they are fine with right. making the call. So I, I, I think that's great. I think that's great. Uh, 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 takeaway for everybody. Now, in what other ways, right? So very, I mean, obviously you've all, you've only been doing this for six years, but you are an absolute superstar, right? On track for 400 deals. Um, and it, and would you, I, I think I know the answer, but would you attribute it your fast success to your discipline and consistency with outbound calls? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, my, my, the source of my, of my closed deals started out my first, you know, it started out of like, 70 or 80 percent from outbound stuff. Uh, if you look at total deals, and and now now it's only about 35 or 40 percent. But what happens is all the inbound business and all the repeat and referral business that we get all comes from the outbound business that we first got. So I mean, everything is still fueled by outbound prospecting. Even the other sources of business that we get are really only possible because of all the outbound prospecting that we've done. So today we've got, you know, uh, eventually I I hired a calling assistant and then. Um, you know, a second and a third and a fourth, and we had our own little mini call center. And then what we did was we were, we were succeeding at such a high level with it, um, we had some agents ask us if we would help them with it. So we kind of spun the call center off into a business of its own called Phone Animal. And Phone Animal is a, is a call center here in Austin run by, run by myself and my ISAs, and we, we basically train. Um, we recruit, hire, and train ISAs locally in Austin to call for other teams as well as calling for our team. So we've got, of course, agents in Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, and, and um, our calling assistants here at Phone Animal are, are the ones fueling the leads for, the, for all of that business. And so that's definitely still our number one. Um, it's the backbone of our business, outbound prospecting. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of expires in today's market. So a couple of years ago, we had to make a huge shift going from being expired-based to being just uh, neighborhood, just straight-up neighborhood 
circle prospecting base. And so uh, we had, you know, that shift, the biggest part of that shift was that it used to take us, you know, five conversations to find a quality nurture. Now it takes us about 20 conversations. So it's literally four or five times um, the, the workload that it used to be. So the, there's never been a better time to, to utilize, we, we, you know, ISA is calling it citizens, whatever you want to, yeah. however you want to term them. There's never, never been a better time to do that. So we've really enjoyed those not phone animals. We've had a lot of fun doing it. Now, and, and look, I mean, I, 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 I just, let's spend a few more minutes on this because, you know, I think, uh, you know, being able to outsource your, your, your act of prospecting um, is, uh, I think a lot of that would appeal to a lot of people. So um, what, if you feel, I'm on your site right now and I don't see any pricing. So number one, are you comfortable talking about some of your pricing? And number two, yeah. you know, what, what results could someone get in what time frame? Yeah. So basically, a couple of things. So the first thing is it, it costs two thousand dollars a month for your first ISA, and then we give you, and then we have discounts for additional ISAs after that. Um, but what we do is we're essentially recruiting. We're doing all the recruiting. We're doing all the um, training, management, um, you know, all that consulting with you about everything you need to know about the prospecting piece. We're ba- it's basically an all-in-one prospecting solution. It's pretty much the easy button, so that if you don't want to um, hire ISAs in house and you don't want to do the circle prospecting yourself. You just hire us to do everything for you. And so, so that's what we do. So we go on and hire, hire the ISA for you. What we found out is that my ISAs that would call for eight hours a day, um, you know, we found them, they were, they were after, after about three hours on the phone, they were finding every excuse to, you know, take a long lunch, be on break. Um, it turned out that I had guys as a test scenario come in here for a four-hour shift, and they were almost as productive as the people that were in here for the ISAs that were in here for eight hours. Yep. Yep. So we found out we could we could actually be a lot more cost effective by um, by running four hour shifts. The problem was you're not going to get it's going to it's ISA role the calling assistant role is already a high turnover position. So now when you when you make them um, when you bring them in for part time roles instead of full time roles, that's naturally a even higher turnover higher turnover role. So that that was kind of the reason why Phone Animal got started because it was an opportunity for us to go out and, and, um, and have full-time recruiting staff, have full-time training staff, um, and, and in order to help pay for some of those resources, making this available for other agents, we're able to bring in the revenue to actually have those resources, whereas just on my little team, um, we, we, couldn't deal with, we couldn't deal with a high level of turnover. We didn't have full-time recruiters and full-time trainers and all that. So we've got, we got coaches working with the ISA and um, recruiters on staff or, you know, bringing in, they're interviewing like 10 people a day, just just consistently making it happen so that if, uh, if the ISA quits or is underperforming and, and needs to be fired or whatever the deal is, we've got somebody right behind them to fill in, in their position. So we're basically the easy button for, for real estate teams to do that. So yeah, 2000 bucks for first one. Well, what it, what it comes out to is they're generating nurtures. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of focus out there on appointments. And what we found was um, there are thousands and thousands of homeowners in every city that are more than happy to have you come out to their house and, they can show it to you and, and chat with you about their home, but they're just not motivated to sell. And so when, when, I, was, when I was incentivizing uh, my ISAs to set appointments for us, uh, we, we, one month they set 150 listing appointments. And, and we actually had them, they had to go through an entire qualification script, fill out a form. Um, I mean, we were really, really focusing on quality, and yet out of those 150 appointments, I think we ended up only going on about 50. Wow. Because, you know, what happened was we, they, they were – they knew that they were being judged by how many appointments they set, so they were they were just working as hard as they could to get those appointments set. And um, and and so by by not focusing on the appointment, just focusing on the nurture, it totally changes the game. So when you hire a phone animal, you don't have to pay any bonuses or commissions or anything like that. Whereas you do when you hire an ISA in house. Um, so here they're not incentivized to set the appointment; they're just incentivized to qualify a really uh, a really warm seller lead and get them into the pipeline with all the notes and everything necessary. So we have very specific criteria around those nurtures. So, um, you know, part-time, a part-time ISA is getting anywhere. They're getting 30, 40 nurtures a month, um, sometimes more, sometimes 50. And, um, and so these nurtures um, on my team, over time, it's like 12 to 1 turn into a listing. And so the, the challenge is, if not right away, you know, some of these lead sources, some of the cool things I've heard about radio, um, you probably know, obviously, a lot more about that than me, but um, a, lot, a lot of what I've heard about radio and television and, and even some direct mail, some of these leads turn over right away. Mostly when you're circle prospecting, these leads are, are not turning over right away. They're, you're catching them completely off guard, so they're ready to go six months from now or nine months from now, 
Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's all about, it's the consistency game. It's all about building your pipeline so that, you know, you have business six months from now, nine months from now, 12 months from now. And eventually when you're doing it long enough, it turns into what happened to my team where every day we wake up, we've got a whole new list of people that want to be called today. Right. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, do, I, think I, I think for people to, to throw down two grand a month, I mean, you have to be, there's a certain level that you have to be at in order to, to be able to just afford that or take the risk of, you know, you know, dropping 24 grand uh, and well, see what happens. Well, here, here's the way I put it. Here's the way I put it is, is when you're a new agent in the business, there's two resources we have. We've got time and money. So yep. when you're a new agent in the business, if, if you're anything like me, you don't have a bunch of money, but you have a ton of time. So it's your job to get in there and do the work. Eventually, um, eventually you start trading time, you start trading money for time. And that's how you actually go from having a job to owning a business. So, you know, at, at some point along the way, it becomes necessary to leverage. And whether that means hiring people in house, outsourcing it, or buying leads, you know, those are kind of your three options. But at some point, you begin to, you begin to need to grow and start leveraging it to somebody else. So definitely for new agents, I would highly recommend put in the work yourself. You're going to be that much better for it, and it's not going to cost you money. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, without leverage, there's only so much you can grow, right? There's only so many deals you can do a year. You're going to, you're going to be capped. You're going to find that cap very quickly. And so, and again, we, we spent a lot of time on this, and I guess that's okay because it's, you know, that's the, the backbone of your business. But in, in what other ways, or do you employ any other strategies or methods to grow your email list? Uh, to grow the email list, man, yeah. that, so w- one of the cool things about when we're calling for nurtures is, you know, we might only get five nurtures, but to get those five nurtures, we've talked to a hundred people, sometimes more than a hundred people. Well, half of those people are willing to give you their email that, you know, well, basically what we say is, uh, we, we've got some emails that we, 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 uh, send to, um, people in your neighborhood, other people locally here in the market, just to keep them up to date on what's going on in the market, um, kind of what's selling, what the average prices are going for. And, and also just everything else about general real estate that you might want to be kept up to date on. Is that something you'd also like to receive? And if they say yes, which almost half of them do, we're able to get their emails without spending any extra money because we're already, we've already hired the phone animals to go out and get us the nurture. So it doesn't cost us any extra money now to all of a sudden be pulling these emails in. Um, so that's one of the main ways that we're increasing the distribution list for viral marketing. It almost becomes our own little radio, little private radio channel that we get to little commercial that we get to send out a couple times a month. Yeah. Um, and then ad- additionally, let's see, I mean, we really don't spend a ton of money. We, we do some Craigslist postings to bring in some IDX leads. Um, w- you know, we do some, uh, in one of our four markets, we do some pay-per-click advertising because it's, it's a lot less expensive there. Um, but the other ones we don't. We really are spending the bulk of our money on this outbound prospecting game. I mean, it's, it's, it's been, the, it's been the, um, the backbone, like you said a second ago, it's been really the backbone of all the success in, in my business. That's amazing, man. Um, so, okay, we, we have to start wrapping up here. We've already we've been uh, we've been on the phone for forty nine minutes, but we're, we're recording forty two minutes. So, I'm going to ask you the 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 same th- similar three questions I ask everybody. And the first one is, well, I'm going to ask you four. Why does someone like you, Tim? All right, you're you're you're, you're a young guy. You're energetic. You're clearly smart. You're you're clearly you know innovative. Why do you still have a coach after five and a half years? What do you get out of coaching? Oh man, 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 this is hilarious. So, um, so first of all, I've gotten, I've gotten something different out of this coach. So, um, I hired my first math coach, um, yeah, about five and a half years ago. And all we did week after week after week was I would bring, I'd say, you know, here's the two objections that killed me this week in my listing appointment. And we would just work them. We'd work them so hard. Um, he'd give me every response that I could get and we'd practice them. And then throughout the next week I'd go use them. And then I'd come back and I'd say, okay, well now I'm getting these. Well now I'm getting these. So for a year, we literally just crushed scripts and um, it literally took me to the next level on my listing consultations and being able to set appointments with, uh, with brand new expires that were being pounded by, by other people. So I really got confident in those scripts and objection handlers. Then what happened was I started asking that coach um, questions about, uh, about other parts of my business and he didn't really, it's not that he didn't really have answers, just we weren't really, I wasn't really growing in that area and I had kind of, I had kind of figured out the script being now. So, I actually switched coaches and we start. I, I got the new coach now that helped me um, learn how to build my team, how to actually make the next hire and actually how to build a training plan for them and all that type of stuff. Well, then it got to the point where, um, where I was losing focus and I needed more accountability and that coach was really more of a consultant. I needed somebody who could actually um, hold me accountable on a regular basis. So I switched coaches. My third year, I had a coach that literally just called me every day and said, Tim, last week you committed to doing X, Y, and Z. 
um, tell me how that went. Well, I did X and Y, but, um, you know, I, I never got to Z. Okay, well, talk to me through, talk me through that. Well, at what point in the week did you, you know, it was a very, very hard accountability conversation and it really, really, really helped me. And then, um, and then in my fourth year, I switched to a coach who really helped me think differently about things. It was just a coach that would constantly ask me questions that would get me out of my box that I was in on a regular basis. And that helped me to get out of being in production when I started thinking about things differently, um, helped me get out of being, you know, I haven't, I'm in, I'm in my, I guess I'm um, starting my sixth year in the business and I got out of uh, production two years ago. So I haven't, I haven't sold a, represented a client selling a house in about two years now. And that was thanks to uh, being able to think differently and think outside of, of, of my day to day by stepping back and having that coaching call to talk about working on my business and what I would need to do to be able to spend more time working on my business. So, um, Today, I have, I have a coach that basically we, we do a lot of that same stuff. We're constantly having conversations about how to think differently about what I'm doing now. So it's a chance once a week to basically talk about somebody who cares about my business because I'm paying them to care about it um, and to help me kind of step outside of the box that I'm in and start thinking about things differently. It, it honestly, um, it, it, it's, it's been what I need to constantly get to a new level for, you know, a new level at whatever point that I'm at. Got it. Okay, that's, that was a great explanation. Um, so, so you know, I always ask for a book recommendation, and I'm curious as to what a guy like you reads, and hopefully you read. I know you're 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 a, you're a very young millennial. All, all the time, man. All the time. All right. Here's the setup. Well, hold on. Here's the setup. Let me give you the setup. Um, and because you're a KW person, you can no no Gary Keller books. All right. So here's the setup. Right, 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 right. right. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Oh, as an aspiring agent, I was going to tell you what I'm reading right now. Um, let's see here. There's an aspiring agent and it can't be a Gary Keller book. That's a tough question for me because I, I thought, I mean, I grew up on my, I grew up my career on Gary Keller books. Um, I would say Think and Grow Rich. Yes, man. That's, that, I agree. Man. That's one that everybody should have in their bookcase. Um, yep. so, so, you know, look, I'll give you one, Tim. Have you ever read, uh, The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes? You know, Somebody just told me about that the other day. I've never read that book, but I, somebody just told me about that. My friend Blake Sloan just told me about that book, The Ultimate Sales Machine. You need to get it. There's, there's, there literally, he, it's, it's a fantastic book. He covers all. He covers marketing. He covers recruiting. He literally gives you scripts for recruiting high producers and and how to do it. Wow. And, um, so it go. It's a great read. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of. I'm, going I'm, ordering, I'm ordering it right now. All right, I'm cool. ordering it right now. So listen. That's awesome. Listen, everybody in the audience, you know, if you want to get Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, or if you want to get The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet, Hol- uh, Chet Holmes, or if you haven't read uh, MREA by Gary Keller, get a free copy on us. Just use our link. Go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive, and you get a free copy. Hey, so, so th- this is my last question to you, Tim. Do you feel that, you know, we've talked about you, you clearly have – a phenomenal uh, d- a discipline, right? You have you know, great methods. Do you feel that you have a personal habit that has contributed to your success? A personal habit that has contributed to my success? Yes. Um, you know, there's something that I call the thankfulness and gratefulness habit. Hmm. I've got a, got a little stone that my mom gave me. I don't even know when she gave me this, but um, it's, a, it's just a, it's a Bible verse. It says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. So I've got it sitting here right on my desk. And I would say that one habit that I've had probably for the last, I don't know, five or ten years has been to just always be grateful for, for every opportunity, for everything in my life. So I wake up in the morning, and it, I mean, it really is habit. I wake up in the morning, I'm thankful for the day, I'm thankful for the things that are happening in the day. I go to bed at night, I'm thankful again. It's, and it's constantly throughout the day that I'm constantly being thankful for the things that I have. I think, it, honestly, I think um, ha- having that mindset and having that habit of constantly being that way, I think it's totally changed um, change my reality, change what's happening around me. I, re- I really feel that way that um, life has just continued and continued to get better and better the more thankful and grateful that I've been. So, I don't know, that's just a personal habit that I've, that I've kind of had Look, myself. I think that's a great habit. I'll tell you, I, I, I sometimes do this and I sometimes don't. I don't do it enough. But when I, when I, in the morning, think about how grateful I am for my wife or my kids, 
um, it literally colors the way I see their actions during the day for, for, for the better. Um, so I think that's, yeah. a, that's a great, great habit for everybody to, uh, to uh, um, you know, work on. Now, look, Tim, I'll tell you what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that you spent an hour with me and my audience. Listen, Tim, Absolutely, we, man. You, you, know, you have expansion teams in Dallas, in Austin, in San Antonio. Uh, where else did you say? Um, Dallas, yeah, Houston. We're just, just getting going in Houston, yep. So maybe – I'm, there's probably a bunch of people, but you know, for those people who who are in those markets and they want to join your team and work with you, uh, or just you know, I, I encourage everybody to say thank you, right? Be grateful, thankful for for if they've got anything out of this, I encourage them to reach out and say thank you to you. So, if somebody has a referral, oh, I appreciate that, man. Thank right, but hold yeah. on, hold on. If somebody has a referral, wants to join your team, or just wants to say thank you, where can people find you, Tim? Well, they can find me on Facebook. They can private message me, Tim Heil, H-U-I-L. Or they can also, you can also email me, Tim at HeilRealEstate.com. Either one. Awesome. And listen, everybody, if you're walking your dog, riding your bike, or driving to work, all this stuff you can find on SuperAgentsLive.com under Tim Heil. Hey, Tim. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. I really appreciate you having me on the call. Thanks all so right. much for doing it. You got it. You got it. Let's keep in touch. All right. Bye-bye. Let's go. Yeah.